Hello, I'm Dr. Moy Markman from City of Hope, and I'd like to, over the next few minutes, talk about a very different topic from what I normally discuss, and one that probably is relatively rarely discussed um, uh, in uh, clinical conversations uh, among clinicians. But there was a very provocative uh, commentary that appeared in the Journal of uh, Clinical Oncology uh, Practice entitled, Hollywood's Take on Oncology, Portrayal of Cancer in Movies, 2010 through 2020. You know, uh, all of us, as we grow up, uh, as kids, as adolescents, uh, young adults, adults, older individuals, uh, watch television, watch movies, and, you know, the, the older of us know about, uh, you know, the doctor in everybody's home. Um, we all wanted Marcus Welby. Of course, there was uh, Dr. Kildare, there was ER, there was Grey's Anatomy, um, St. Elsewhere, there was Love Store and Brian Song. Of course, you know, we all know about this sort of, uh, you know, it's there. But this particular um, review, again, uh, fascinating. They, uh, uh, the authors looked at 100 English language movies uh, that appeared uh, that related to cancer, that cancer included in them in this cancer in the storyline over the past decade. And they asked some relatively simple questions, like how did they discuss it? What were the tumor types they discussed? What were the outcomes? Because the question is, what is the public seeing? If, if you watch these movies um, and you don't have family experience or personal experience with cancer, uh, what do you think about cancer? Maybe this is what you know about it, despite what, you know, the National Cancer Institute, the American Society of Clinical Oncology tells you that this may be what you know. And what they showed was was, was really quite interesting. Um, only one third of the shows even discussed, excuse me, one third of the movies even said the cancer type. So in two thirds, you just knew they had cancer. Okay. The other very interesting phenomena is what do you think was the most common cancer type when they defined the cancer? It was brain tumors, even though we know that brain tumors are certainly not even within the top 10, obviously very serious cancers. But if you're talking about common cancers, brain cancer doesn't right rank in the top 10. And it was the most common cancer on the on these shows. Um, the, the authors of this paper make the point of wouldn't this be an opportunity for uh, filmmakers? Again, storyline. They're trying to sell a, a product here, but wouldn't this be the opportunity to provide some information about the reality of cancer? Um, the fact that smokers get lung cancer, to emphasize that, or or even, in my opinion, the comment on that, you know, say it could be a cervix cancer and comment on, gee, if HPV vaccination had been done, maybe this would not have happened. Um, they note that the majority of cancers in these movies were incurable. Uh, and they comment, but you know, that's not the reality today. <laughs> today, I've seen many of our cancers that were incurable have become quite curable for a percentage of patients. In addition to which, obviously with early detection, uh, we have a very high cure rate. And, and, you know, to sort of say, but, you know, how about trying to get that message out too, that we've actually have a lot of success, increasing success. Uh, the comment on the fact there was very rarely, if ever, a conversation about multidisciplinary care, that, that somehow that there are multiple doctors with multiple specialties involved. Um, and, uh, you, you know, they noted that uh, this is, you know, potentially uh, a very important message to give out. They, they commented that actually in 12 of these movies, uh, the patient uh, refused cancer care. Again, that happens, but it's a, clearly a rare event today. And again, maybe uh, not really being a very accurate depiction of what's going on. It commented on the fact that, again, obviously we're going back the last 10 years, there was, were no patients that received immunotherapy or targeted therapy. Again, the goal here is not to uh, you know, sell oncology care, but to you know, sort of be accurate or more accurate about the state of, of treatment to the extent you can. And finally, they, they noted that, um, in fact, there is essentially 
very little, if any comment on palliative care or hospice care. Um, and uh, the final point they made is there was very little conversation in these movies about what we now recognize um, as uh, financial distress in many of our patients. And again, that's a reality, um, unfortunate reality, and perhaps you know that might come in uh, in the future. Uh, again, the point of this was not to tell Hollywood how to make their movies, but to, but to re have the uh, oncology community recognize that if their patients, if the families of the patients are seeing these movies, they are today not getting a very accurate picture of um, what is happening in the oncology world and that some education uh, may very well be uh, required. Again, a very interesting commentary for those of you interested in the topic. Uh, this appeared in the uh, Journal of uh, Clinical Oncology, Oncology Practice. And I thank you for your attention.